Our next speaker is Jessie Janae, and she's the founder and maker of, sorry, she's the founder of Lumi and the maker of Inco Dye. And it's a new DIY process for printing on textiles and clothing. It's a really cool product, and it's a business that she's been building since she was 16 years old. And I think you're really going to like what she has to say. So welcome, Jesse. Hi, everybody. Hi. Nice to, oh, is my mic OK? All right, <clears throat> I'll step back. Uh, nice to be here. So. I, I'm the maker of Inco Dye, and we're pioneering a new way to print on fabric at home. And it's been quite a journey getting here, so I'm going to kind of rewind and also share some personal bits of that. So I wanted to start here because I'm pretty sure I had what would be very similar to a, a midlife crisis when I was 15. Uh, obviously, it wasn't the middle of my life yet, but. I, this kind of sensation, I was a normal high schooler and I was getting good grades in school and doing sports, etc. And the sensation kind of washed over me one day in my sophomore year where I suddenly felt like maybe my life wasn't going anywhere. Now, okay, I'm probably an overly dramatic teenager as well, like on top of everything. But, but the sensation I had was that I didn't know how to actually do anything. Uh, I didn't know how to fix my car. I didn't know how like the world around me really worked. All I knew is how to do my schoolwork and kind of do my sports and stuff. And so I made a really like rash, dramatic decision to start a business. I, and and th that was literally the decision I made. I was like, I don't know how the world works. I should start a business. Um, and I didn't know even what kind of business I was gonna start, which is kind of the funny thing looking back. I just thought that it was, sounded like a good idea to like teach myself the world, you know, type of thing. So I landed on t-shirts. I thought to myself that starting a t-shirt business, I was, I was creative, I love shooting photography. I thought I could take my photographs and maybe put them on t-shirts and that would make a really cool business. And how hard could that really be, right? How hard could it be to start a business and, and print you know, t-shirts at home? And, and that's really the beginning of this journey because turns out, you know, it's really hard. It's really hard to do both of those things, apparently. It's really hard to start a business, as I'm sure many of you know. It's also really hard, I learned, to print the types of ideas I had onto t-shirts. So this is a little chart kind of describing different printing technologies. There's a lot of stuff out there, but screen printing is definitely still the de facto you know, method out there, especially when you're just getting started. And so you know, I typed into Google, like, I want to print t-shirts. And like, it returned to me that I should probably do screen printing. And so I started buying a bunch of equipment. My parents' basement very quickly started looking like that image at the right, where I basically took over the entire thing print, you know, with equipment, and I had to ask for Christmas and my birthday for all sorts of inks and presses and, you know, chemicals. My mom used to come downstairs, uh, it, like, you know, in the waning hours of the night and to see if I was still alive because I was using, like, xylene to, like, clear out my screens and, like, there's no ventilation. So... I kind of got a hard, you know, hit of reality that it's that that it was really difficult, but especially because of the types of imagery that I wanted to put onto my shirts. I really love photography, and I'm and I'm sure many of you are aware exactly what screen printing is. It's basically like a stencil-based process. So I was trying to, you know, squeeze a photograph like through a stencil, and it just never looked quite right. I I couldn't get the result at home. So my first inclination was to actually assume that I must just be doing it wrong. Like I spent, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars and, you know, tons of hours and I just couldn't get the result. So I must be doing it wrong. And I went to a local screen printing shop to ask them what I was doing wrong. I was like, I want to take this photograph and I want to print it like all over this t-shirt. I want it to be on the sleeve and like wrap around the side and all of this stuff. And after patiently listening to me for a few minutes, the, the guy in my local screen printing shop, and I grew up outside Detroit, told me that what I wanted to do at home was impossible, or he thought it was kind of impossible in general. There's, um, aside from screen printing, there's a process called sublimation 
which is essentially like a you know more manufacturing grade transfer technique, but sublimation inks mainly adhere to polyester. And being a very stubborn, finicky teenager, I didn't want to print on polyester shirts, so I was still stumped. I couldn't do my result. But what annoyed me the most was that he had the nerve to tell me that, that I should, he was like, you should just change your designs. Like you should just not be trying to do what you're doing. If you only would just like print text in a t-shirt, you'd be fine, it would be easy. And kind of being a little stubborn, little person. I thought that was so annoying that it was, you know, at this point, it's like, you know, 2000 something. And we had, you know, taken a man to the moon, you know, many, many years ago, and we can do open heart surgery. But I can't print like my photographs on a t-shirt at home. Like I was irate. Uh, so that kind of started me on a path of researching this. And perhaps it's a little bit of OCD, or perhaps it was like, you know, a really fascinating subject. But I dove like, I dove into researching printing techniques. What else is there out there? And I already showed you that chart, but I kind of became uninterested in that. What else could there be? Because none of the technologies that were available really suited my need. And again, I'm broke. I have no money. Like I don't have the money to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on equipment just to make a cool shirt. And at the same time, at this point, I think I was in my junior year and I was in a photo 101 class in school and I was working in a dark room. And it became really interesting to me that the, the chemistry and history of, of photography, we've actually been printing paper using light for hundreds of years. Photo paper is light sensitive and we use a negative and we print on it. Old photographers, like people like using, actually used to develop images in these wagons uh, and they used to use the sunlight to actually develop their film, etc. And that really sparked an idea in my mind that why, why couldn't we do something similar on fabric? Then all you'd need is a negative. You wouldn't need to make a big bulky screen. You wouldn't need presses and huge digital printers. It'd be so incredible. You could do one of a kind designs instead of needing to burn a screen and print hundreds of them to make it economical. And I kind of instantly saw this all rippling out, but of course I didn't know exactly how to get there. And that's where Inkodai enters the equation. So Ingo dye is now a product line that we sell. It's a light sensitive fabric dye that's permanent, but Ingo dye actually has roots. Um, it's chemistry, you go back to the 1950s. And in that crazy rabid research mode that I was in, I discovered it and it was essentially ex extinct because no one had thought that it was a good product. It had been basically failed on the market, market in the art supply world because people were like, who needs a color changing dye? It was like a mood ring or something. It just seemed so useless. So. I apparently, you know, I didn't think it was useless and I've been in the process of actually resurrecting that formula, perfecting it and turning it into this photo process that allows anyone to print permanent images at home without needing tons of equipment and without needing tons of money. I felt very vindicated that maybe my one t-shirt design that I had developed at the very beginning of this wasn't impossible. Uh, so I, you know, I started doing prints with this process once I started to figure it out. On the left there is actually a couple of my first Lumi prints that I ever did. I named it the Lumi process when I was still in high school. It just meant light to me, like Lumi, light. And on the right there you can see a print that we recently did. Now, to kind of bring this to life, I'm going to show you a video in one minute that kind of shows you how a whole process works so you can see it for your own eyes and then we'll come back and I'll tell the rest. So 
that's a one minute overview of, of how the process works. It's a little stylized, but I will tell you that those shirts that I printed were the shirts that I printed right while we were shooting the video. We had no time to prep for, for that particular day, so there's no like Martha Stewart magic in that. Like I printed them and then pulled them and like hung them on the wall. So that is literally how fast the process, process can work. A print takes about um, 10 to 15 minutes to develop in the sun. And so once you have that negative, which you can print on a home printer, we also have a free iPhone app where you can make and order your own negatives. You're actually good to go to make permanent, incredible prints at home. And this is, this is essentially what I dreamed of when I first thought that perhaps printing with light was a possibility. But to kind of bring us down to earth and not paint me as like an oracle of, of photographic printing, I want to come back to this. So this is an image of some furniture that we printed in the early days of Lumi. When we had figured out the process and we were able to make the formula ourselves, but we weren't yet selling dye and Inko dye was still not really on the market. So the world kind of hadn't discovered this process, but we knew how to do it. And so we were doing prints to kind of perfect it and doing a lot of business. We were printing and we were making money. And there was this moment where we had to ask ourselves, like we have a monopoly on an incredible process right now and people love it. Like people would buy these throw pillows for exorbitant amounts of money printed because they look so neat. And there was this moment where we had to ask ourselves, is that what we want? And, but because we knew that we could also release the process. And so it was a tipping point where it was a very, you know, important decision to decide that it's just too cool. Like we just can't hoard it, you know? And the, but, but I want to, right now that seems obvious and we've had so much success selling dye and selling kits and turning into a business that I could stand up here and tell you that that was such an obvious thing to do. But to be perfectly honest, it wasn't. It's, you know, I thought of myself as a designer, myself as a maker. It wasn't obvious that I should start supporting, you know, thousands and thousands of other people to do that with this process. But we took that route. We put the dyes and like our first kit up on Kickstarter last summer and we raised $268,000 30 days, our ask was 50 to release our kit. So that was definitely, you know, kind of added fuel to the fire for us imagining that not only was it a good idea, but it was an incredible business to empower other people. And it also felt amazing, like to make the dye in Los Angeles, this is where we're based, and to ship it out and see people doing designs all over the world. There's like, there's no amount of printing that I could do myself that would give me the same feeling. <clears throat> And from that point, the process, you know, I had been so obsessed with the details of printing and how cool like a print could look that once we started sharing it, I kind of finally understood our larger mission, which was, you know, to kind of show other people what they're capable of. One of the, one of my favorite things about the Lumi process is that all you do need is that bottle of dye and a negative because you can be, like, you don't have to be the craftiest person. I know I'm speaking to a bunch of super creative people here, but there's something um, inaccessible and sometimes difficult about just sitting down to even do a creative project. And I know we've all crossed that hurdle, but there's a lot of people out there who are still just intimidated by the concept. And so I've watched, at this point, thousands of people, like, peel back their first ink or dye prints and see the sparkle in their eye that like, wow, I actually made that, that thing that I'm looking at that, you know, because the negative and the sun kind of did the hard work. And that to me has been amazing. And additionally, we've worked really hard on creating the digital tools. So kind of dropping all of the nonsense that there might be a war between analog and digital photography or analog and digital in general, the, we worked, we worked really hard to, uh, put out some free tools, like we have a free iPhone app that helps people prototype their concepts. And by putting the tools directly into people's hands to actually make their designs, my hope is that they actually express themselves more clearly, that there's no filter of even ordering it from someone else or deciding if it's worthwhile enough to print hundreds of. If you've got the idea, just get it out of your head, like onto something that you can put out in the world. 
And this is a return to that chart. So I like to now think of ourselves as, you know, at Lumi as an addition to this chart of options where now someone can spend, you know, as low as $15. Our kit sells for 30, our starter kit. We're always trying to make it cheaper. We're starting to offer more and more custom solutions where you can order custom negatives for, for inexpensive. So for a very low price point, you can get a very high quality print on, on cotton and on natural materials that you like wearing. And you can do it quickly. You know, a print takes 10 to 15 minutes in the sun. And so to add that in, I really hope, it, you know, kind of changes the game of, photo, of, of printing at home. And what I've seen so far is that it is. We have people who have now started businesses using Incodai. And they're like, there's nothing that makes my heart go a flutter more than that to see like a 16 year old girl who now can start a business doing t shirts like I always thought I would for, for spending like $50. Like she can do her first designs and stuff. It's to see that happening and see people sharing that has been <clears throat> really, really, really important to me. And that's. That's it, guys. <laughs> we like to see your wardrobe as a blank canvas. Thank you.